Welcome to all. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am the SDG officer at Platforma, so the pan-European coalition of local and regional governments and their national, European and international associations, all working together towards decentralized development cooperation. So I'm glad to welcome you today to the session on the ways to increase global impact from the municipal level through international cooperation. You all probably are very active in this field or very interested by international cooperation at local and regional levels. So I'm looking forward to exchanging with you and with our distinguished speakers today. So Platforma is a coalition of over 33 uh, partners from across wider Europe. VNG International has been a long-standing and very, very active partner of Platforma since the very beginning in 2009. And we're very proud, of course, today to support the Global Goals uh, Meetup event in the context of our joint program together uh, of the Platforma project. So since 2030, uh, since uh, 2015, when the 2030 agenda uh, was launched, Platforma and its, all of its partners have been very actively working on trying to make the link between decentralized cooperation and the sustainable development goals. It's, uh, it, it's becoming increasingly obvious uh, that these two are very much linked and uh, naturally linked, actually. City to city and region to co region cooperation is a key tool that helps speed up the implementation of the 2030 agenda and vice versa. The 2030 agenda proposes a common language uh, and universal framework for partnerships to easily uh, be created by, uh, and it connects and reinvigorates partnerships across the globe. So uh, some of the stories we will hear today, one is actually uh, going to show how around a common SDG we can create a partnership, and another one will show how through an existing partnership we have identified that it actually affects several of the SDGs and it's working towards the implementation of the 2030 agenda on its own. So we have been really amazed actually at how cities and regions and their associations have been pioneering in the world of SDG localization, uh, both in Europe and beyond. And so here today, I would be, uh, I'm very grateful to welcome our two distinguished speakers. We will have um, Delphine Le Rouge from the city of Roselar in Belgium. Uh, who will present a very, very dynamic and interesting project uh, with a partner city in Bénin, Dogbo. And then we will have Vanessa uh, Corrales from uh, Fonts Mallorca in Mallorca, who will present to us a very innovative pilot project linking up three different continents together from Europe, Africa, and Latin America, all trying to, to create a common uh, way of working around a common solution, which is uh, a common problem, which is water. So SDG number six. I'm going to give the floor already uh, first to uh, Delphine, who is going to present to us her pilot project. So, I mean, her project. Delphine is actually um, the laureate, uh, the winning, let's say, uh, project of the Platforma Awards in 2018, and we're very happy to welcome her again. Um, the Platforma Awards is a yearly award ceremony that Platforma coordinates together with the European Commission and our partners that basically awards the best decentralized cooperation activities um, from year to year around a key theme. So in 2018, it was awarded to the city of, Dog of Dogbo and Roselar, and uh, we'll hear more about it from Delphine herself. So thank you, Delphine, for joining us, and the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, very well, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, so my name is Delphine Le Rouge. I'm working as a civil servant for uh, the city of Roselar. And um, at the next slide, you can see where uh, Rousselaar is uh, situated. So it's a city uh, in the Dutch speaking part of Belgium in the heart of uh, the province West Flanders. And uh, since 2009, we started looking for a partner in the South to cooperate with. It was a, a campaign of our federal governments to work together with um, a city in the South and on the next slide, you can see uh, where our uh, partner is located. Um, so um, maybe you can show the next slide if possible, thanks. Um, yeah, so you see um, Dogbo is um, a city in, uh, the, in Benin, a country in the West uh, African uh, part of in West Africa. Um, the city to city cooperation, um, the, the objective is working on uh, good governance and um, 
what we do is we exchange knowledge knowledge so we work together from a civil servant to civil servants and um, reciprocity is is uh, very important in our cooperation and i added the aspect of the or the value respect which is also very important in our uh, cooperation project okay the next slide please um, on the next slide you can see our mayor uh, at the left so I told uh, you already that uh, the city to city cooperation is not is um, is the cooperation between several servants between two administrations, but the political level is also very important. We have um, support from our politicians, not only the mayor, but also all el aldermen is very involved in the project and it really helps to give a certain dynamic to the project. Uh, it's really um, an, an, an needed add you, uh, value added uh, at the project. But not only the politi politicians are involved, also uh, the civil society in Dogbo and in Ruslare is involved in the project. We have uh, since 2016 a non-profit organization, Dogbo Dogbo, that um, supports social proje projects in Dogbo. And um, we have already other uh, partnerships, such as schools that involved. Um, we have three schools in Ruselare that are connected with a school in Dogbo. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, on, the, on the next slide, you see a girl that's holding a paper, a paper that is very important, maybe the most important document in one's life, and it's a birth certificate. Um, this paper is... Um, a paper for the future for uh, children for people because without a birth certificate you have no rights uh, you cannot have a diploma uh, you cannot vote you have you can't have a passport so it's really really important in the beginning of our project uh, on the next slide you can see um, there were some discussions with the administration of Dogbo. we were looking for teams to work on and in the beginning we were talking about uh, archiving uh, the documents in the city of Dogbo. because as you can see in the closet there was doc there were documents um, that were totally destroyed because of the weather conditions because of termites but in the discussions we noticed that um, one of the, the, the problems was um, the um, registration of births in uh, the community. And um, what we have done, we have um, do, uh, discussed a lot with the, the service over there, with the um, head of the service. And we discovered that um, there were also an investigation that has uh, took, took place. And we discovered that uh, more than 60% of the children uh, were not registered uh, in, in Dogbo. On the next slide, you can see that um, the, the problem that was, um, no, it's another slide, but okay, um, that you can see that the, um, the problem was there that, um, yeah, there, was, there were a lot, a, a lot of people that were not registered. And uh, what we have done, we have, um, together with Dogbo made a, an action plan uh, and we pointed out different actions and one of these actions was the digitalization process um, so uh, we Dogbo bought software and uh, from that moment on um, all the uh, certificates of the children were put in the computer and they hired also a lot of people um, uh, extra staff to uh, digitalize all the old uh, certificates also. On the next slide, you can see um, another action. Um, okay, that's uh, the slide. So the actions we, we, we have taken was awareness rising. Um, that was also very important because we, we noticed that a lot of uh, people weren't aware of the importance of having a birth certificate. So that's why we organized um, a lot of awareness raising activities. We optimized the procedure by organizing training and Dogbo also recruited extra staff. Um, the means for that was uh, we invested uh, 10,000 euro per year um, for organizing training, for um, um, buying IT equipment, and um, we continue to do that. Um, and our aim is uh, to have efficient birth registration that gives access to equal rights for every child in Dogbo. Okay, um, maybe the next slide. Um, 
as you can see, we um, there is a connection with a lot of SDGs that are, are involved. Um, it's not only important that every um, child has a birth certificate, but with that, um, with uh, doing or organizing um, a good birth registration, it also gives uh, the opportunity for communities to have data. And with that data, it helps the community to make plans for the, the future, make a vision for the future, uh, to organize urban planning. Because without that uh, systematic registration, it's impossible to plan the future. So we, after a couple of years, we noticed that, our, that there are links of, with a lot of SDGs uh, in that specific project we are uh, doing with Dogbo. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, so I already told uh, you about the digitalization process. Okay, on the next slide, uh, you can see another activity. Uh, okay, we already had that one. Uh, maybe the next slide, please. Um, okay, we, we organized training for a lot of people in the community, the staff. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see um, the head of the service of um, civil affairs that was re really, really involved in the project. He helped us to, to uh, gain our objective. And um, you see here in uh, one of the seven districts of um, Dogbo, where the staff is uh, doing the registration, and they were also involved in the training process um, for uh, that uh, specific project. Okay, uh, maybe the next slide. And um, another activity we organized was uh, the Cinema Numérique Ambulante, uh, en français, in French. Um, that is an awareness uh, activity, and the concept was very uh, nice, very easy also. Uh, an organization in Benin goes uh, to every village, they, they went to every village in, the, um, in Dogbo uh, with a Jeep, a projection screen and uh, a generator. So even in the villages where there was no electricity, they showed um, a video, first a comic video, and then the information video in the local language, the local language of the people over there. And um, it gave information to the people of the importance of having a birth cert certificate for their children. And afterwards, there were, was also a debate with all the inhabitants of uh, that uh, village. But afterwards, we organized other awareness activities in churches, also in uh, voodoo ceremonies and so on, because it's a process that is uh, still going on and is still very important. Um, okay, next slide, please. What we also did, or Dogbo did, was uh, recruiting um, other staff members, people that um, uh, are um, working in each district and they follow do the follow in, following up of the birth uh, registration. So they go to the hospitals, inform the parents and see that all the um, births are uh, registered. So it's uh, they play in a very important role in that and uh, they get motos uh, fr also from <laughs> the community of Ruselara to, to do their work. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so the results or the resulta result, uh, re realizations and numbers. So um, in that period of about nearly 10 years, we have formed more than 150 actors uh, several times because after the elections, you have to repeat uh, the training because uh, of there are new polit politicians involved and you have to, to do the follow up. Um, we also re regularized, regularized um, more than 1,400 children who didn't have a birth certificate before, uh, who were born before 2011. Uh, we organized uh, more than 53 sessions of the Cinema Numérique, and we um, and there were more than 40 uh, national and international visits to the service of Dogbo to learn more about the project and to inspire other communities in Bina and in other countries. Okay, the next slide. Um, so in 2018, um, as um, Charlotte already told, we won the Platforma Award. 
Um, and that was um, a, a nice, a very nice uh, prize because um, we, with that prize, we won a reportage of about 20 minutes of uh, our project. Uh, the reportage can be seen on the website of uh, Platforma. It was a really nice uh, project. And also very important for us, we uh, gain uh, recognition for a project. Um, so we can uh, tell them, tell about it in uh, a lot of, uh, during a lot of uh, uh, conferences and so on to tell people about the importance of having uh, birth certificates for the children and for people all over the world. Okay, the next slide. Um, it's not only uh, the, the, the process of birth registration that we are doing with Dogbo, uh, we do other projects and here you see a photo of um, colleagues, one of uh, some of my colleagues are of other Flemish uh, communities who work together with their partner city in Benin. And uh, we are working uh, with the support of the VVSG, that's the Flemish uh, partner of the VNG, um, and we are working together on uh, supporting local economy. That's another project we are working on. Okay, maybe the next slide. Um, what we also do is uh, it's, we, we find it very important that the people, the inhabitants of Russelare, get to know our partner. Um, so awareness rising of our activities in Russelare is for us very important. Um, last year, we celebrated 10 years of cooperation. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, really celebrate it. We couldn't organize a party. party. We couldn't invite our uh, partners of uh, Dogbo, but we organized an exposition that is now um, in several places in, in Russelare. Uh, you can uh, go and see it. And here you can see in the hospital in Russelare, um, this uh, column, this pillar, uh, that gives more explanation about our project of birth uh, registration. Another thing we do, and uh, you can see it in the next slide, is uh, we organize awareness raising activities about the SDGs. On the left uh, photo, you can see an activity um, that was organized during an event in 2019. Um, we organized the um, Everybody's an SDG Hero. Um, activity and uh, you can see the heroes that are, do a little quiz with uh, the visitors and uh, they uh, gave them tips and tricks to um, implement the SDGs in your daily life. The other picture is a, a city game, a game you can do with tablets about the SDGs. Um, the, the aim of the objective of the game is uh, you go uh, for a walking tour in Russelare and you get to know other organizations and projects that are working on achieving the SDGs. And it's a competitive game. You play uh, with uh, different groups uh, to each other. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we had it all. If you want more information about our project, you can visit our website. Um, it's uh, only in Dutch uh, speaking, or Dutch uh, website. Um, and if you want more information, uh, you can see my uh, email address also. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And I don't know if there are any questions. Yes, thank you so much, Delphine. Really an amazing project. Uh, it took a long time to implement, I guess, but it was a really uh, successful one. And I know from our from our perspective, the video uh, reportage, as you mentioned, which was the uh, prize you won from the Platform Awards, has been very well received uh, across all of Europe and beyond. We regularly share it with uh, a lot of people, and it has uh, really been a, a very attractive tool to engage partners on decentralized cooperation activities and show the added value of working on such international partnerships. So thank you to you and to your partners in Dogbo for the work that you do. So we are, of course, a very dynamic group here today. Uh, this session is an interactive one. Uh, we're just between friends. It's a collective brainstorm. So don't be shy. Ask any questions that you may have to Delphine. Now it's the time. Um, you can ask them either in the chat, or I think there is also an option for you to raise your hand somewhere, or otherwise just feel free to take the floor. Uh, I think we are uh, also very looking forward to hearing from your experiences. Have you 
And does anybody in the room have any similar projects going on uh, or with similar partners in Africa and you'd like to compare experiences? Uh, I don't see any hands raised or anybody willing to take the floor. Delphine, maybe you can provide some more information on um, what have you planned now next for this project? What is the upcoming um, future that you'd like to to focus on, um, if there are any? For the, okay, uh, for this specific project, we are uh, planning to enlarge it. To um, we are organize we are organizing another training, and we want to uh, implement uh, the communities that are um, next to Dogbo, so that they also. Mm -hmm. um, learn to know about the right procedure that everybody's involved in their own community. So we would like to enlarge it. But um, we are also, as I um, explained a bit in the presentation, working on other projects um, like supporting the local economy in Dogbo. Uh, we are, uh, there is a huge market um, in Dogbo um, that uh, has a lot of uh, problems like um, um, litter and so on, and so we're working on that uh, specific team also. Okay, thank you. That's really great. And so you mentioned that um, you you identified afterwards in your project that you were actually focusing on several SDGs. Um, so it's a, a question I had asked you already before, but perhaps it's mm -hmm. interesting for new participants as well to know. How is the SDG framework and the 2030 agenda going to actually help you with not only this project, but with future projects? How, how is it going? Is it something that you will take into consideration when uh, working on new international cooperation with peers? Or is it something that uh, you think happens automatically, actually? Um, now that we are making plans for uh, this project, on supporting the local economy, I think uh, we—it's we, for sure that we will use these uh, these uh, SDGs as a as a framework, as a compass. Um, so that's for sure. Um, if we, uh, I think we, we, I'm for sure that we are uh, using this because it's a, yeah, a global um, compass. And uh, I, I noticed that in in Bina, uh, it's even used more than in Belgium. I, I think so. Um, it's a common agenda, and uh, it's very nice that we share the same uh, objective, this, the sh the same goals. So it's for sure that we are uh, using this. Great, that's amazing. Thank you. And um, about the, what have you learned from working with Dogbo and what has Dogbo learned from working with you? How, how can you call this a mutual learning experience, let's say? Um, what we have learned is that we have a lot of, uh, a lot of things in common. Uh, we, um, uh, Dogbo and Russelara, they, um, yeah, they have the same, um, how do you call it in English? I'm sorry, I'm used to speaking French or in Dutch. Go ahead, so in French, I'll, tra I'll translate if uh, needed. No. <laughs> or in um, Dutch, what we I do, think. <laughs> what we do is um, we provide services to our, uh, uh, our inhabitants, as well mm -hmm. as in Dogbo, as in Russelara. So, um, we have a lot of things in common, although there are a lot of differences, we have a lot of things in common. Uh, the way they organize, uh, for example, the participation with their inhabitants, it's something we, we can learn about it. Um, the way they make their plans uh, for the, there, there were elections, local elections last year, the way they organize it very efficiently, very uh, fast. Um, and the way they make plans for the this um, next five years to come, it's uh, for us. It's really inspiring. So we can learn a lot of things. We have a lot of things in common, more than we sometimes think. That's great. That's amazing. Does anybody else in the room actually have some experiences? Um, what have other people maybe learned from their international cooperation uh, activities? Uh, what are the similarities between them and their peers and what are the, the things that they have learned in how can what kind of innovative you know process processes or tools have you acquired? I think even Delphine and, and myself would be very happy to hear about that. So don't hesitate to take the floor. I know we're approaching four o'clock, it's coffee break time for some of you, but don't worry, mm -hmm. we're gonna get there soon. And uh, you've all been great participants so far, so keep up the mood. Don't hesitate to, to engage. 
Is anybody willing to, to share? I, yeah, I well, see another right. question. Yeah. You have a, is, sorry, is there a question or is Mr. Paul Mulder willing to take the floor? Yes, ju just, just briefly. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm Paul from Almira in the Netherlands. And we, we have participated in uh, a long project together with VNG International and once with Platforma with uh, cities in Ghana, also in mm -hmm. West Africa. And in the chat, I, I see a, a comment that in the Netherlands, this type of participation on a peer to peer level is losing ground. And um, th that is the case that I is also my personal experience working uh, in these type of projects. Um, what, what I find in Ghana a, a challenge working with uh, municipalities at a local level is keeping up the contacts with, uh, with our partner city. Um, even though we speak the same language, which is English in this case, uh, I find that quite a challenge. So I was interested if um, Delphine could maybe uh, elaborate a little bit more on that aspect. How, how do you keep in contact as a local government uh, in the West with one in West Africa? And how are results? Um, how do you sustain the results that you achieve in these type of projects? Uh, as my experience is that can be quite a difficult challenge. Thank you, Paul. Maybe Jan, uh, who asked a similar question in the chat, would like to compliment so that Delphine can have both uh, questions in mind when she answers. Jan? If it's possible. Otherwise, I think maybe Delphine, if you'd like to answer, go ahead. Okay, um, maybe um, the first question about the contact, um, it's not easy. Um, normally, once a year we go to, to Dogbo and sometimes they come to Russelare and it really helps uh, to discuss uh, the, the, the actions or the projects you are working on. Um, now with Corona, it hasn't been, a we, we, we haven't been able to, to go to there. Um, the last time we were there were, was at the, at the end of um, 2019, so it's not easy. Um, but luckily, we are able to discuss by um, WhatsApp. By uh, mm. we, we are sending emails, and now um, we are organizing also um, video conferences. So it, it it's not that easy, but there are still some contacts. Um, I, I think uh, every week or every. Uh, once every two weeks we we are in contact um so it's working quite well but um we we really uh, wanted to go over there to discuss to see other partners other projects to talk with other people to see the context of uh, of the things it also helps um for more to have more strategic uh, discussions also with politicians and so on but um okay it's it's not that easy but it, 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 you have really to invest a lot of um, uh, to to keep that contact alive, but um, okay, it it, it goes uh, quite well. And then the other question is how we sustain results. Um, what is very important is that um, the politicians are involved. For example, if we are we are working on a project on the marketplace um, with um, um, a group of people that are uh, working on awareness rising about uh, litter and dirt on the marketplace, um, it's very important that the staff is paid by Dogbo itself, that the politi politicians are um, uh, really they believe in the project and that they are able to to implement it for a longer period so that's uh, that it is a sustainable project and I, I think um, because of all the activities we organize such as uh, the digital this uh, dig digitalization project of the bird certificates it's a project that's really sustainable so we it's really important that uh, with every project we do we think about how we can sustain all the results that we have uh, made and we try to share it with other communities in Bina and other uh, countries um, I hope that's a bit an answer to your question Thank you, Delphine. Uh, 
Yes, I, that's a great, I find a great answer. I, if, if Paul would like to, is it okay for Paul or you have another question to follow up on? No, 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 I, I just, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a challenge uh, in, in the context and uh, it's, it's good to, uh, well, uh, see how other people are doing that. Um, one thing I take away is that uh, Delphine mentioned that on a very regular basis, I think twice, once every two weeks, that they had a contact moment. That, that is important. And with the focus on sustainability, I, I think the aspect is that in, the, uh, in your own country, in your own municipality, you have support from your local politicians, but also in the country that you are active in. Um, at that level, the, the, the project is discussed and also uh, you, get, you gather support. So it's not only a technical uh, exercise, but um, yeah, you Thank discuss you. the project at different levels. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I I will read the question from Jan in the in probably that he asked in the chat. Thank you, Jan, for uh, for it. And I'm sorry your microphone is not working. So we will we will be your voice. It's not a problem. And I'm asking this question actually to everyone in the room, uh, because I think others who may potentially have uh, some experience to share uh, are very welcome also to answer to Jan. So in the Netherlands, he's saying that this type of city to city twinning is losing ground. So he's wondering if in Belgium, is it still at a rise and, and, uh, and how is Belgium doing it? But how are all of you potentially still, still sustaining your uh, decentralized cooperation activities? Are there anybody else? Is there anybody else who would like to perhaps share some insights or add some questions to that? I'm sure you do have some experience to share. Don't be shy. <laughs> Or just write it in the chat if needed. Uh, my colleagues can also help relay and share uh, your your responses. I I saw just now that Mr. Rob Christiansen from Schiedam uh, just connected. So I know that you're a very active city, also very active in very a lot of networks, including Eurocities, uh, and have some experience also on decentralized cooperation activities or international partnerships in any case. Uh, Rob, I know you just joined us. I don't know if you have a, a working microphone or not, but don't hesitate also to share some of your experiences with us. Uh, maybe you don't have the microphone on, it's not a problem, but you can write in the chat then, please. Maybe uh, um, I can add that in Belgium, sure. um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, in the beginning when we started working with Dogbo, there was a cooperation with Ridderkerk, um, that, that's a city in the Netherlands. But um, after a couple of years, indeed, they, they stopped the, the, the cooperation. Uh, but there are still some uh, social organizations in uh, Ridderkerk or in other um, communities in the Netherlands that are supporting social projects. So I think not, not on the level of the city to city cooperation, but social um, and, and at the level of the social society, they, there are still, st still some projects. But I can say in Belgium, it's still uh, going on the city to city cooperation. I don't have the idea that it's um, falling down, um, that it's uh, so it still continues. Uh, it's not losing ground in Belgium. Uh, it's still in a rise. Uh, yeah. OK, I know that it's also the case in for, for other countries in Europe. Uh, it's on a rise as well uh, for Spain, for instance. Uh, and the different Spanish uh, associations and networks involved, especially they're very active in international cooperation in Italy also, uh, and Germany is increasing its decentralized cooperation activities. So there are some good examples out there to share. And I know that Platforma is uh, working together with our partners this year to create a handbook on decentralized cooperation, where we're going to kind of list the different activities uh, from our network and the different examples out there for you to have some insights and, and learn from. So as soon as that will be available, we can, of course, with pleasure, share it to VNG, who can share it with you all. Uh, so if you are interested, let us know. Or if you have some stories or so you'd like to see appeared in this, uh, in this kind of handbook, don't hesitate to share them with us as well. 
Uh, I know, Delphine, you were talking about awareness raising activities, uh, so reaching out directly to citizens. That is a big part as well, of course, of international cooperation at local level uh, the, that cities play uh, with a great importance and very effectively. Uh, how was that received um, within both sides? So the European side within Roselar and also in Dogbo with the, the, the citizens of the city in Dogbo? Well, um, it's it's very important because uh, for us it's important that people of, of um, Ruselare get to know our partner. Um, for example, another another thing we we have done is um, in our um, the park we have in Ruselare. There is a little uh, corner, a little square that is called the Dogbo Place, uh, Espace Dogbo in, Fran in French. Um, and it was an idea of the mayor of uh, Dogbo. He, he really wanted something uh, physical of, of Dogbo in Rousselare. Mm -hmm. So it's a little uh, place that is called uh, Espace Dogbo. And it really um, is something physical that refers to our um, um, city to city cooperation. We have done other uh, things such as um, an uh, exposition with photos uh, of Dogbo and so on. So. I think every year, about every year, we do activities to um, to get to learn to know our partner. But um, it's also, as as we said from the beginning, um, this uh, cooperation is really it helps to really uh, get in touch with other. Um, uh, topics such as climate change, uh, we can really uh, use in schools the, the example of Dogbo, how they uh, deal with climate change, how they deal uh, with um, the water problems and so on. So it really helps if we can tell in schools stories about how they do it in Dogbo, how they, what are the challenges in Dogbo. So for us, it's, it's really um, something very practical to work with, to talk about uh, international topics, international challenges. So um, for us, it helps. And we, we do the reflection uh, time and time again. That's great. Thank you. I see here in the chat also that uh, Jan followed up with another comment. So in the Netherlands, uh, the problem is uh, about a political discussion on giving to local development cooperation uh, space and vice versa national international cooperation. Uh, if I understand well, some political parties do not support well municipal international cooperation. So I think it's also very much linked to political support at all levels. So mm -hmm. from the local mm -hmm. level to the national level as well, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be able to continue on with such projects. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. true uh, that, uh, that that's something crucial. And that's why advocacy efforts of mm -hmm. networks such as Platforma, of uh, VNG International within the Netherlands themselves, uh, CMR for uh, the Euro Council of European Municipalities uh, and regions at European level. Those are our key and core activities is also to help fight uh, at all levels to make sure that there is the support needed uh, and granted uh, to cities to continue working on such projects. So if you, if you do uh, wish to join us in our advocacy efforts, please do not hesitate by sharing some of your good practices because by um, kind of showing and verifying our messages with key facts uh, and, and stories and data, that's how we can manage to prove our points uh, to the different politicians uh, at national and European level. I see also on top of that, that budget cuts uh, due to financial constraints linked to the COVID-19 crisis, of course, is a big issue and that we're very much aware uh, of and uh, decentralization of national tasks mm -hmm. to the municipal level without sufficient funds. So how uh, is that affecting your projects, Delphine? Is, is that uh, something that has been an issue for you as well, uh, linked to the current pandemic? No, uh, the only thing is that we 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 share the same problem, uh, the worldwide wide problem, and we we um, supported also at, at the, be the beginning of the pandemic. We supported Dogbo with uh, a small amount of money for uh, materials such as um, hygiene project products and so on. But I think uh, now with this uh, crisis, it shows that solidarity is very very important. Um, within the countries and all over the world. So it hasn't really affected our project. Uh, no, not at all. Okay. 
Well, that's great. I hope that um, your experience is also shared with others uh, and may, maybe you have some good tips to share <laughs> with some about it. Uh, great. I was also going to inform all of you that for those who are interested in knowing more about how to link decentralized cooperation to the Sustainable Development Goals, Platforma together with UCLG, so the global um, uh, the global network of cities and regions, uh, the direct, the Secretary General Emilia Sai spoke at the opening. We launched just two weeks ago a um, training module on the, the SDGs and decentralized cooperation to help guide your projects uh, and help you understand better how to make the link between the two, how to better use the 2030 agenda in your international partnerships, and how to also, you know, enter into partnerships or reinvigorate existing partnerships using that. Uh, tool, which is the, the SDGs. So if you're interested, do let us know. I think my colleague Hervé just added in the chat the link to the module. So feel free to have a look at it. And in, do not hesitate to come back to us if you have any specific questions or if you wish to join one of the trainings that we're going to set up together in the coming months. Um, I see, is there anybody who would like to add another question or a comment? No? Okay, coming back then to the topic of awareness raising, I also wanted to highlight uh, that awareness raising and local solidarity actually has been gaining traction, especially since the, the COVID-19 pandemic. It has really showed us all the importance of uh, supporting our peers and the local level did it so well uh, from the start, uh, without hesitation uh, even sometimes. So it's something that we should all be proud of and continue sharing as well. And within Platforma, we have a campaign called the European Days of Local Solidarity, which is a yearly campaign taking place every November for two weeks, where we invite you all to share your stories of local solidarity, highlight them uh, together. We voice your messages and share your best practices to a diverse range of stakeholders so that they can all see the added value of working at local level on international and global solidarity and the importance also of linking our work to uh, the work that we do with citizens so really awareness raising and development education is uh, is crucial it is a big component of the european commission's uh, program uh, for the next uh, period to come and, uh, and it's important for us to continue also showing to the commission how how much um, they need to factor the local level in. So don't hesitate to, to also join us for that. I see that the link is already in the chat as well. My colleagues are on a roll when it comes to link sharing. So don't hesitate to click or save those links uh, and look at them later and come back to us if you have any questions um, on those specific topics. Uh, also, information for those of you who may be interested, the European Union launches uh, regularly calls uh, to support financially some projects uh, at city level uh, linked to international cooperation and this specific there is a project still uh, there is a call available still for partnerships so city to city partnerships the deadline to apply for these calls is actually going to be on the 23rd of April and it will be the last call of the programming um, because there were since there is a new programming period that just entered into uh, force recently um, they have slightly changed their ways of working and um, they will reduce the number of calls for cities. So we are, also, of course, Platforma together with VNG and uh, all of your great stories. We're working on making sure that the Commission keeps us in mind uh, for future projects in, until 2027. But don't hesitate to uh, at least apply for this third call now, which is until 23rd of April. And if you need help, do not hesitate to contact your national association. So co contact VNG and contact Platforma. We are here for that as well. So uh, I think I've just given you a lot of information. I'm sorry, but it's, you know, an informative, informative session as well. That's the point. I'm also happy to receive information from you. So does anybody wish to share something perhaps um, on what they're doing uh, or on questions that they may still have for the remaining time that we have left, which I think is not so much, 11 minutes. I don't know if there's anybody who has their hand raised. I cannot see very well as a moderator, I have access to a different platform, but just take the floor, feel free. It's like an open room. No? So I know that we, oh, I have my colleague Boris with us today. And we're sharing the same orange black background as you can see, platformer colleague Boris. Thank you for joining us. 
Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. I hope the sound it's very good. It's okay, very thank good. You very thank much. you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add a, a very general comment because from the morning we have been speaking about the sustainable development goals, about SDG municipalities, and how these goals can be actually a new framework to refresh existing partnerships or even motivation to create or establish new international partnerships towards the global goals. Uh, so we hope that, that these new topics will, would be able to, to mobilize a little bit cities, but also regions to engage in, a, in global actions due to the fact that whatever you do on the local level, anywhere in the world, basically has a global impact on uh, achieving the goals of the 2030 agenda. So, so we believe that, that decentralized cooperation is a specific tool that can help specifically local and regional governments who are specific actors on the ground, just like in Europe and so in partner countries, in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia Pacific, in all the countries that we all want to help and, and uh, support them in achieving the global goals. So that this becomes a global movement, a global effort together where each municipality can, can tailor made their own actions, their own priorities within the global goals to the needs of the local community and to the needs of the local development. And, and these examples that we've heard about really show that the actions of local governments on the ground, on the local level, do actually have a global impact. In the end, they contribute to reaching the global goals and objectives all around the world. So that's why we promote decentralized cooperation. Uh, and also we try to, to mobilize actors towards new innovative actions, innovative activities, so that decentralized cooperation doesn't become, let's say, a north to south transfer, but so that it becomes a living dialogue, a learning dialogue between two or three or more partners on how to best improve local governance, how to improve the provision of local services, um, and how to make the 2030 agenda a reality. So uh, this is just a general observation on, on the important information that we've heard today and that, that helps us bring together the puzzle of the goals of decentralized cooperation, local development. There are so many aspects that need to be put together under, under let's say, a joint umbrella of, of coherent movement towards a joint objective in the future. So, so thank you very much for your attention and for your contributions. Yes, thank you, Boris, for adding that uh, very valuable information and for highlighting the role of uh, local and regional governments in this very important um, part of international development cooperation, which is decentralized cooperation. So we were supposed to have, of course, another speaker today, but she had some technical issues and couldn't join us. So um, I'm not, I can't go into as much detail as she would have uh, for her project, which is a very specific one. But we can, of course, as well share with you some information on what she had planned. So it's uh, the city of Mallorca, um, at one of the cities in Mallorca, connected together with uh, the city of T Tenado and uh, the, in Bolivia and uh, Burkina and a city in Burkina Faso, um, to create a common project together, a very innovative project together, a new one based around one same SDG, which is SDG number six, because they all identified water as a common priority and a common challenge. So uh, if you're interested in knowing more about how she did that, she went through together with her partners uh, through different dif types of impact assessments. She used some various tools that I can share with you also later, um, perhaps in a follow-up email, we can ask Vanessa to at least uh, share the PowerPoint presentation that she had planned, which is a very complete one. Uh, to help guide as well those of you who are now still maybe hesitant, hesitating to enter into a new partnership or how to, you know, create partnerships that are also based, uh, that are multiple, not only with one peer, but with several peers, because that was the innovative part as well. Um, around the SDGs and, and that so, so far has been quite successful and has become a reference uh, also for uh, future projects uh, that will focus on uh, the implementation of the 2030 agenda. 
Um, the, 2020, the next Platforma Awards uh, will take place in 2022. So for those of you who maybe by then will have some interesting information they would like to share, are more than welcome to apply to become the next laureates of the awards. And like Delphine uh, and the city of Roselar, win, they can win a, report, uh, a documentary, a video uh, of the project, which is a very uh, strong uh, tool to help promote your project across the world and platform of course supports you after in doing that very much. Um, and so don't hesitate to contact us if you would like to know more about how to apply for that. Uh, last year, the winners were actually uh, the Provincial Council of Barcelona, so DIBA, together with six municipalities in Morocco, had a very interesting partnership around gender equality and local democracy. So you can see that uh, partnerships can focus on any topics because there are uh, a, a range of issues that are common across the world. And as Delphine said, everybody is very much the same in the end. Uh, we all have the same struggles uh, and we all need the same kind of solution oriented approach. And by working together, we can make that happen. Okay, so I'm going to give you all one last chance to intervene if you would like to. We have four minutes left and I would really love to hear from somebody else. Um, perhaps, I don't know if somebody wrote something in the chat. Uh, but we would love to hear some of your experiences and exchange with you as well and support you, maybe help you if you have any questions linked to some of your projects or hesitations. Don't hesitate. If you have other, other questions that may come up later, please write to VNG, who will forward it to me and to uh, our speakers today so that we can continue this dialogue beyond today's session. This is, of course, a conversation that we have on a regular basis, and we would be happy to uh, keep you in the loop uh for the upcoming uh, steps so do i see anybody else who'd like to provide some concluding remarks on this no i guess you all really need that coffee don't you okay no problem i fully understand um okay so in the next steps, uh, you will enter into uh, another plenary session, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe Charlotte, you can quickly explain the next steps uh, for the participants. Um, in fact, uh, I don't know the program after the workshop okay. because I'm not supposed to be here, but... <laughs> no problem, no, but I think then that's... what's going to happen is that there is going to be another short break uh, for five minutes uh, and then you will enter into the plenary closure, which will uh, highlight concrete action points for all global um, goals municipalities uh, in the run-up to the municipal elections in 2022. Um, so that will be a very interesting part of the session as well, and we hope that you can all still join us for this. So we're delighted as well on behalf of VNG, VNG, VNG sorry for my bad touch, uh, and Platforma that you managed to join us for today's mini session and workshop. We hope that it has been informative for you uh, and that next time we can continue to engage more on this. Don't hesitate to apply to all the different things I have mentioned. So whether it's the platform awards, whether it's the European Union call, whether you would like to become a trainer or benefit from a training uh, to learn more about the SDGs and decentralized cooperation. Uh, Platforma together with VNG and our different partners, we are producing a study. We are producing a regularly actually every year, a study on the state of play of SDG localization across Europe, but also across um, the different decentralized cooperation activities of European cities and regions and their associations. And it will be the next version of the 2021 edition will be launched in July on the occasion of the United Nations High Level Political Forum. We will feature great examples from VNG and some of your municipalities as well. If you'd like to share a concrete story, not necessarily decentralized cooperation, but one of your SDG success stories with us to be featured in the publication, don't hesitate to write to VNG so that they can share it with me as well. And we will then make sure that you have your uh, space in the publication and that we can feature and share with our different partners at UN level and also at European Union level. And of course, the publication can be shared with you afterwards as well. Uh, perhaps my colleague Hervé can quickly share later the link still to the previous publication that was launched in 2020. So it's the 2030 Agenda through the eyes of local and regional governments associations. So you can already find some information 
of how things are working in different countries across Europe and especially how the associations play a key role in supporting you in this process. Okay, so I have 50 seconds left. Uh, I hope that you've all had a great afternoon. Don't hesitate to reach out to us for more information and stay tuned for the next steps. Thank you for those who have interacted and a big thank you and virtual applause, if I may, to Delphine Le Rouge for her amazing presentation and for all the very valuable information she shared uh, about the project. Uh, it's been already a, a couple of years now since the Platform Awards and we still are delighted to exchange with you on this because it's still a very strong reference point for us. So thank you Delphine, merci beaucoup. And thank you to all of you uh, for joining us today.